Now, if I'm discussing this specific film, I feel like I should take you guys on a trip down memory lane. But with that said, here is a little clip of yours truly from 10 years ago playing the part of Macmillan in Big the Musical. Piano lessons? Oh, three years. Four years. <laughs> God, still one of the coolest things I've gotten to do as an actor. But guys, we're here talking about Big, starring Tom Hanks, directed by Penny Marshall. Came out 35 years ago. And for a lot of people, this is the role that broke Tom Hanks into the big time. And it's hard to argue against that point, guys. This is a role that got Tom Hanks an Oscar nomination for Best Actor in 1988. And after this his career took off. So after a wish from a mysterious fortune teller like Zoltar Machine turns a 12-year-old Josh Baskin into a grown-up Tom Hanks, he heads to New York City and gets a low-level job at Macmillan Toy Company. A chance encounter with the owner, played here by Robert Loja of the company, leads to a promotion testing new toys. Which is kind of unbelievable that this 13-year-old kid jumped at an opportunity to actually take a job where he plays with toys. A vice president of a toy company that tests these out has to not exist. But soon a fellow employee named Susan, played here by Elizabeth Perkins, takes a romantic interest in Josh, who must I remind you is 12 years old. But the pressure of living as an adult begins to overwhelm him and he longs to return to his simple former life as a young boy. Now I gotta tell you, this is one of those movies that I just kind of stumbled across on HBO one day. I think I was sick as a kid and I was kind of playing hooky from school. And I stumbled across Big, and I was like, oh, Tom Hanks is in this? He's the voice of Woody? Give this a shot. Lo and behold, that 11-year-old kid who was staying home from school absolutely fell in love with this thing. Now, don't worry. As a critic, I do have to take off the rose-colored glasses for this one. But even just on a rewatch... This is still a damn load of fun. And a lot of this has to do with an absolutely hilarious screenplay, which actually got nominated for Best Original Screenplay in 1988. It is just funny from the word go. Not only is it funny, but it happens to take the fantastical elements of this completely ridiculous situation and it grounds it in a lot of reality. There's still scenes in this movie that scare the living daylights out of me. And this actually kind of gets me into a point I want to make. If you've never seen Big, which first of all, what the heck are you even doing here? But I must warn you just in case this will contain some spoilers. So if you've never seen Big, go check out the movie. It's on Disney Plus if you're a subscriber. Then come right back and we'll talk about it. But the scene that still scares the sh out of me is the scene where he actually checks into that ratchet hotel in New York and he hears a gunshot right outside his bedroom window. There's somebody yelling in Spanish on the phone and he locks himself up in this completely disgusting hotel room and he starts to cry himself to sleep. That's one case that I feel like really shows you what Tom Hanks was capable of. And this was a big gigantic showcase for this guy. He got an Oscar nomination out of this film. And it's not even necessarily in the fact that this is a 31 year old Tom Hanks at the time playing a 13 year old boy but think about this for a second a lot of the scenes where tom hanks kind of realizes oh i done up he does so with minimal to zero dialogue the first scene where you see tom hanks in frame is actually in young josh baskin's bathroom and you learn so much josh is so amazed at how big he's become and that can be played for a lot of really clever little laughs here and there bit juvenile if you really think about it. But again, most of how we get how Tom Hanks is feeling as a character, you get it with minimal dialogue. The hotel scene I just mentioned, the opening sequence where you first see him as a big version of Josh. How about the montage towards the end where he's kind of going back and looking at all the things he's missing as an adult? Because let's face it, he could have stayed in this adult world and just BS the job interviews his entire life. He could have stayed in that dream apartment for a little boy as well. And he could have continued maintaining that relationship if you wanted to with Susan, who's played great by Elizabeth Perkins, by the way. Don't really think she gets enough credit. But I really feel like with Tom Hanks's performance and the lessons that we're teaching here, don't grow up too fast. It's a very simple and kind of on-the-nose premise, but I think this movie handles it with a lot of class. 
and dare I say, a lot of emotional tear-jerking moments. That might have something to do with Howard Shore's fantastic score in here. But you really feel the heartbreak for young Josh, especially throughout the first half of this movie, where his mom, who thinks Tom Hanks is a kidnapper, basically threatens him out of his own house with a Michael Myers kitchen knife. He's left with nowhere else to go, except to his best friend, who's in gym class at the point, Billy Kopecky, who's played by Jared Rushton, and he's really, really great in this movie as well. And again, this is such a smart script. That scene where he first realizes that Josh is big, like, he wants to call any sort of authority figure he can imagine. He wants to escape the clutches of this guy no matter what. But Josh very cleverly does the little ditty that him and Billy know, and only him and Billy know. Shimmy, shimmy, go, go, bop, shimmy, shimmy, rock. Shimmy, shimmy, go, go, bop, shimmy, shimmy, rock. You can feel the desperation in his voice so much. And fun fact, that little gimmick was actually something Tom Hanks learned at camp growing up as a boy. And it really makes the whole experience of Big feel so much more authentic. This is one of those movies that really makes you feel like a kid again, mainly because of the messages, the direction, and even with characters like the tight executives played here by the late Robert Loja. You just take one look at this guy, and you are just waiting for that moment to strike, and you kind of feel uneasy in a sense if you watch this movie for the first time, especially in 2023, that is. You're just waiting for Robert Loja to turn into the most vile, conniving, disgusting businessman walking the planet. Maybe somebody that you would see in the news every now and again. But no, Mr. McMillan is the nicest guy walking the planet, and for a president of a toy company, this is the most kid at heart individual in the room. And nowhere is that more apparent than the FAO Schwartz scene. I showed a little clip of my version of the big piano, but I feel like we can all aspire to be as iconic as that big piano sequence where they play heart and soul, they play chopsticks on the FAO Schwartz floor piano there. Which, if my memory serves me right, is still out there and you can still play the floor piano. I don't know if that's true or not, but man, that's the one scene that I think of. It's the scene that's on all the advertising nowadays with Tom Hanks by himself on the piano. And for good reason, because it's such a simple little scene. This storyline is so simple and so fantastical in so many elements, but you just can't help but feel the charm of this movie. Again, not just in Hanks and Logia's performance, the comedy in this movie, again, it has me busting up every time. Billy Kopecky has some of the best insults that a kid, I think, has ever given in a movie. And I'm three months older than you are, asshole. How about the late John Hurd as the stuck-up businessman Paul? The comedy in this comes from his overreactions to what he thinks is Josh scheming his way into the fold. And the tennis scene where he basically is called out for cheating? Give me the ball, you little s***. It <laughs> makes me crack up every time. Miss John Heard so, so freaking much. He's also known for playing the father, Peter McAllister, in Home Alone. He was so freaking funny. Rest in peace, John Heard. You were so good and big. And this might honestly be his most underrated work. Maybe Robert Loggia's most underrated work. And for that matter, it might be Tom Hanks' most underrated work. Because let's face it, Everybody knows Tom Hanks is Forrest Gump. He's probably sick of being recognized as Forrest Gump in the streets and being asked to quote Forrest Gump. I urge you, if anybody happens to run into Tom Hanks in the streets, ask him to quote big, because he probably doesn't get that a lot. And he could probably still do that camp gimmick that I was doing so, you know, eloquently earlier. That's the thing. If you ever meet a celebrity, ask him something they probably haven't heard in a million years. It'll probably lead you to having a better interaction. But joking aside, guys, Big is one of my favorite comedies. It's honestly, it's a movie that keeps getting better and better the older I get. The messages resonate with me so much more. And it makes me want to not take anything else for granted, even the simplest and most childish things. Now, if I were to nitpick anything about this film, yeah, the romance in 2023 might not be the most audience friendly anymore. By the way, raise your hand if you're watching this movie and you are just so glad that Susan got the hell out of Dodge when she drops Josh off at his house at the end. Because if Josh's mother saw Susan in her car dropping Josh off at his front door, she would be the prime suspect in what's believed to be a kidnapping. Thank God she got out of there when she did. Kidding aside, it's actually a very heartwarming and very sad ending where Josh kind of goes in for the kiss, but Susan does realize that this is very much pedophilia. So she gives him a nice tender kiss on the forehead and sends him on his merry way, enjoying all the glamours of middle school, something I do not miss. Oh my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Screw middle school, man. But hey, Josh Baskin got his wish, and there he is, you know, just living his best life with his best friend. It is such an endearing comedy that I urge you guys all to check out at some point in your lives if you haven't yet. I'm gonna give Big an A. It's one of my personal favorites. It always has been. And despite its minimal flaws, it always will be. Let me know what you think of this film down in the comments section below. And let me know what your favorite Tom Hanks performance is of all time. What do you think is his most underrated work? Guys, I love discussing all new things in movies and entertainment here on the regular. This channel is the place to be if you want to keep discussing all that jazz. Do consider becoming a subscriber and tap on that thumbs up on your way out. Really, really helps spread the love and continues to help grow such an already awesome community. Guys, y'all are the best. Stay tuned for more videos very soon. And with all that being said, back talk commence.